Input and output impedance. Output impedance is how much effective resistance, whether due to actual resistors or other factors, that is restricting the flow of current from a signal source into your circuit. And input impedance is how much resistance there is to current flow within whatever you plug your circuit into. Usually you're going to find low output impedance and high input impedance because the output and input, basically where two circuits are connected, forms a sort of voltage divider. And if your impedances are not wildly separate, then you're going to get a great diminishment of voltage. And generally the input is something that's doing something with the signal, so you want the input to have the majority of the signal. A high output impedance, so to speak, keeps a lot of the signal for itself. But let's worry about the details of applications later. Right now, let's just measure some. Let's start with output impedance. I'm going to use my oscilloscope as a signal generator. I have the function generator wires plugged in here. The function generator is configured for a DC signal. I've got it currently set at 5 volts. I have my multimeter, which I'll go ahead and put here so you can see it. And then I have a set of resistors. I have 100,000 ohms, 10,000, 1,000, 100, and 10 ohms. There's no reason to really do a 1 ohm resistor because that gets down to the resistance and wires. Traces on a PCB can be much lower than 1 ohm, but all this stuff is going to be in the ohm range. Now we know that the multimeter, when in voltage mode, has a high input impedance. We don't know what that is, but it's generally high enough to get the job done. So the first thing we'll do is go ahead and connect the signal source in series with the multimeter, which I've got set on 20 volts now, so it can measure up to 20 volts. Wait a second for it to stabilize, and we have 5.01. And I've connected it in series, so we have high impedance, which means if this has a very low impedance output that could fry with little input impedance that we're plugging it into. Basically, if whatever we plug into it draws too much current, then we could fry it. The multimeter definitely won't. So let's mark down 5.01 volts so we know our signal source. Now, I'll remove that and I'll switch the multimeter into current mode. I will connect the signal source through the 100,000 ohm resistor through the multimeter back to the signal source, negative, and I can see it's basically measuring zero. Now the reason I do this, again, we don't know how much this has. This is just overkill safety. So we'll move from the 100,000 to a 10,000, and now we can see we're getting about 4 tenths of a milliamp. So let me go ahead and move to the 1,000, 4 milliamps. Basically you want to go down in resistor size until the point that you're not comfortable, or before it rather. You want to get as much current as possible while you're still 100% confident. I have no idea how much current this can safely put out, and I can find nothing that tells me. So that implies there's a natural limitation and whatever it can put out is safe, but I'm not sure. But we can definitely go higher than 4.7. So we move up to the next resistor. This is a 100 ohm resistor, and now we went from four some milliamps to 31 milliamps. So 31 milliamps is safe, but I don't really want to go much higher. So let's go ahead and mark down 31.7 milliamps. So now I will unplug this and I will connect that same resistor without the multimeter just through the signal generator. So it's going through the same resistor. This was in current mode, so it was presenting very low resistance. I'll put it back in volt mode and now I will measure the voltage across this resistor. Because remember, we have output impedance from here. It's effectively another resistor, so we want to know what the value of that resistor is. So if I measure the voltage across this 100 ohm resistor, I get 3.31 volts. So now I unplug everything again, so I don't accidentally do anything bad. Now I'm going to connect the resistor through the meter, but this time in resistance mode to measure the exact resistance of this. And I get 101.9 ohms, roughly. So we have our signal source, and we effectively have two resistors. This is our very simple circuit. And this is our signal source. We represent it as the power and then the internal impedance on the output that we're putting through our circuit. So we know that the power is putting out 5.01 volts. I know I measured this resistor as 101.9 ohms, and the drop across it was 
0.31 volts and the total current was 31.7 milliamps. So there's two ways to calculate from here and I'm going to do both because the truth will probably lie somewhere in between due to measurement error. So one way to do it is we know how much total voltage we have. We know how much voltage is here. Kirchhoff's law says there should be a certain voltage here. 5.01 volts minus 3.31 volts is 1.7 volts. So we know the voltage. Let me put Ohm's law up there. We know the voltage. We know the current. Divide voltage by current to get the resistance. 1.7 volts divided by, so 31.7 milliamps is 31.7 divided by 1,000, and that results in 53.62 ohms. This is supposed to be, according to the manual, a 50 ohm output impedance. Great, but let's do it the other way. We know the total voltage, and we know the current, so that means we know the total series resistance of the whole thing. Voltage divided by current equals resistance of these two together. So 5.01 volts divided by 31.7 divided by 1,000 equals 158.04 ohms. That's for both resistors, but now we can just subtract this one because it's just two in series. So minus 101.9 ohms gives us 56.14 ohms. Fairly close. So that's how you calculate an output impedance safely. And if you wanted a more exact number, then what you'd want to do is use different resistors. If you can vary the voltage of the output, vary that as well. You could even try different temperature ranges. Just basically vary everything, use the same process, and get a whole bunch of numbers, and then you just use statistics. You could do mean, median, do a plot, whatever you want, to figure out a good value. But it's supposed to be 50, it's roughly 50, we're good. So now let's measure an input impedance, such as the impedance of my oscilloscope probes. I'll just go ahead and turn off my oscilloscope. We're not going to be needing that. We'll just need the probe. So I have my oscilloscope probe plugged into here, and I'm going to turn on my power supply. I'll go ahead and set it at 5 volts. Let's set the current limit to 50 milliamps. Nothing right now, of course. So we basically do the same process. So the first thing we want to do is try and measure the exact voltage of this power supply. So to do that, I'm going to put my meter back in current mode, and I'm going to connect across the meter through my 100K resistor, then across the meter, back to power, and I once again get nothing. So we'll move it up, and we're getting similar values because it's about the same voltage. So we'll move it up again, move it up again, 46.5. I guess it's settling on 46.4. Oh, 46.3. You see there's very slight temperature variations as this warms up, and also as I wiggle the cables a little bit, if I cool it down, but in any case, just pick a nice number that it seems to be about near, and 45.9. In fact, let me turn up the current limit to 60, make sure that's not a factor. All right, because this is a Chinese power supply. So that is a comfortable current. So we'll use our 100 ohm resistor again. So now I'm going to connect across power, across this resistor and back, and then put the meter in volt mode, measure across the resistor with the meter, and our known voltage is, let's let it settle, I'm gonna say 4.97 volts. 4.97 volts. Let me go ahead and unplug my probe from my oscilloscope. Actually, no. Let me turn my oscilloscope back on. This will be a better simulation of a real world situation. While that's booting up, let me unplug my wires again. So what I'll do now is go ahead and connect through power, through my 100K resistor, across the oscilloscope probe, switch the meter into current mode again, connect across the meter, and back out to negative power. Once again, the reason for this is to make sure that we don't fry something. So let me turn this on, and my oscilloscope, that's about five, let me bring it up a little bit, so dividers of two, two, four and a half, so it's measuring about five volts. But we're getting no current, so let's make it more precise. Move to the 10K, move to the 1K, move to the 100, move to the 10, still no current measured, so we know that this is a super high impedance, which we already did, but it's good to check because there's high impedance and then there's high impedance. So now we know it's completely safe to straight up short circuit this thing. If 10 ohms is still generating no current, nothing will. So I'm going to rewire this. I'll connect through power, 
through the oscilloscope, through the meter and current mode, and out to negative with no resistance at all. And now I have my multimeter on the absolute most sensitive setting of measuring up to two milliamps in microamp increments, and I'm still measuring no current at all. So you might consider this a bad result, but there are better multimeters. For a hobbyist like me, this tells me what I need to know. This oscilloscope probe can be hooked up to anything short of wall power. Now, this one can be hooked up to wall power, but if we pretend I don't know that, then wall power is just the magical, dangerous, don't ever do it touch. But we know that this is now what's called high Z, or Z if you prefer. Basically, you don't worry what you plug this into, it'll be fine. But now let's do something that can be measured on this device. Let's measure a lower input impedance. I'm going to use a 1000 ohm resistor as the input to say this is the device and that's about how much impedance it'll have. So we already know about 4.97 volts from the power supply. So I'll put the multimeter in current mode, getting familiar with this by now. So we'll connect through our known power, through the 100K resistor, through our quote unquote device, through the multimeter, and back out to our essentially signal source. No current, so we'll move it up. There we go, move it up again. Move it up one more time. Since I'm using similar voltages, we're getting similar numbers. But once more, Ah, but that, see, 100K, 10K, 1K, 110. So if I put it to the 10 ohm resistor, now we'll say it's about 4.8, 4.9. Ah, we'll just say 4.8. And since that's such a low number, actually, I'll turn it down to make it more sensitive. So on this setting, we're getting about 4.88. So we'll say 4.88 milliamps. Disconnect it, and now we do the same thing as before. We'll connect through power, through that resistor, through our device, and out, and then with the multimeter on volt mode, we measure across our side resistor, not the device, and we get, unsurprisingly, let's say 50 millivolts. So 50 millivolts, because we have a 1K resistor here and a 10 resistor here. So obviously it's going to be that way. And then the final thing to do is to measure just the resistor. So I'll disconnect everything else, go down to resistance mode with power unplugged from the resistor, remember. And we're getting, let's see, wild fluctuations in the smaller number due to temperature variations and such. But if we let it settle, let's say 2.36, or rather 23.6 ohms. Go ahead and turn everything off. So now we have a similar setup and do a similar calculation, except now this is our device. This is the thing taking our signal instead of providing our signal. So we measured that our power supply is 4.97 volts. We measured that this resistor is 23.6 ohms. We measured that there's about 50 millivolts across it, and the current is about 4.88 milliamps. So once again, we can calculate this two ways. 4.97 volts minus 50 millivolts, which is 50 divided by 1,000, is 4.92 volts. 4.92 volts in the input. So now we have voltage and we have current. Let's find resistance. 4.92 volts divided by 4.88 divided by 1,000 is about 1,008 Point 0.2 ohms. Well, it's a thousand ohm resistor, fairly close. And I didn't measure this one exactly, so it could be a thousand eight for all I know. It has a tolerance of one percent, but one percent of a thousand is ten, so plus or minus ten is within tolerance. So now we do it the other way. 4.97 volts divided by the current. So 4.97 volts divided by 4.88 divided by a thousand to make milliamps is a total resistance of 10, 18.4 ohms. Subtract the known resistance, minus 23.6 ohms, and we get 994.8 ohms. It's exactly the same measuring input and output impedance once you're to the math stage, because it's the same thing. And you can see that 1000, it's right about in there. And once again, if you wanted a more exact number, you would do different temperatures, different resistors, vary the input voltage. Since we control this now, we can definitely vary that by a better multimeter, whatever you want. But that's how you figure it out without risking frying something. So you might ask, if we wanted to know the input or output impedance, which is its effective resistance, why not use the resistance mode of a multimeter and plug it right in? Well, 
that only works when it's off. So you certainly can't use it to measure an output impedance because you'll just fry your multimeter. And you can't do it with the signal source off because there's all kinds of things that can affect it. It's not just a resistor. A resistance measurement is for a resistor. If you have a complex circuit involving transistors and all kinds of things where you're measuring the effective output impedance, effective is the operative word here, you have to do it while it's on, while it's being used as it will be used because you're trying to make a circuit that works with it or that can handle it at least. Well, what about the input impedance? That one's not a powered circuit. Why not just use the resistance mode there? Once again, there could be more than just a resistor going on in there. There could be factors that change the effective, once again that word, effective input impedance. And in addition, I don't know how much voltage the resistance mode of my multimeter uses. It's not going to be much. It's probably safe to use in any context, but I don't know that. So we're being careful. Always remember the resistance mode of your multimeter is for measuring a resistor. You don't just plug it across a circuit and have it work. So now you can calculate the output and input impedances of any device within its operating range, the range you're use it. So now you can just take that number, instead of doing all kinds of fiddly testing, you can just write down that number. And whenever you want to create a signal to go in an input you've measured, or create a circuit that handles an output you measured, you know, just by pretending there's a resistor in there of that value, you just have a power source and a resistor, where the power source is the signal and the resistor is the impedance you measured, or for an input, it's just a resistor. And you just do the math as if you add a resistor, and you can control your currents just fine. So while I go find something else to probe, I'll be seeing you.